Speaking of relationships with coaches, uh, D'Angelo Russell has emerged as a viable third option for the Lakers. They try to make a playoff push. Uh, but his relationship with the team, particularly head coach Darvin Ham, is uh, rocky at best. During a recent interview with ESPN's Dave McMenamin, D'Lo talked about joining the team last season at the trade deadline and how he struggled to build a relationship with Coach Ham because of Ham's close relationship with Dennis Schroeder. Uh, he said the following, uh, Schroeder's relationship with Darvin is the reason I couldn't have a relationship with Darvin. When I was struggling, I would have been able to come to coach and say, bro, this is what we should do, like, I can help you. Instead, there was no dialogue. I just accepted it, and we got swept. And I'm here, and he's not. I like our chances. As, as you may recall, the Lakers lost to the Nuggets in the minimum amount of games possible in the Western Conference Finals. Deal, I believe, ended up being getting benched for game four. <laughs> so this offseason, there was... A lot of talk about if D'Lo will return to the team or not. He came back on a two-year deal. Him and his team pushed, or D'Lo's team pushed for an option, which the Lakers agreed to. They wanted to sign him long-term. The season has some similar issues with Ham. He got benched earlier in the season for a stretch of games. Uh, but since returning to the starting lineup on January 13th, Russell's averaged 23 points on 48, 46, 85 shooting splits, along with six assists. During that span, the Lakers are 17 and nine in games that D'Lo has played and they're 11 and three when he scores at least 25 points. So when we look at this and this story dropping, post-trade deadline, obviously he's come from D'Lo and his team. Why do you feel like he, he's bringing this up now and is this exposing a deeper issue with the Lakers and, and Darvin Ham? <coughs> I mean, it makes sense, you know. <clears throat> um, it's the same thing with you know, Russ, when Russ was having an issue, there was no dialogue. You know, that's, you know, and, and as players, you know, the one thing you can't do is leave us in the dark and, and, and have us think for ourselves <clears throat> in the sense of if you don't give me the guidance of what you want from me, then I'm going to go out there and do it my on how and how I see the, the game. And what ends up happening is if I see it a certain way and you're penalizing me for it but not telling me what you want me to do, like if I think that I should go out there and, you know, you know, get mismatches and go one-on-one -on -one or mismatches and throw into the post and you have something else but you're not telling me but you're telling him and then he's benefiting from it but I'm not, I'm going to have an issue with it, right? The, 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 point, the point of fucking coaching is making sure everyone is on the same accord, right? If I got to sit there after a game and talk to you for fucking 30 minutes each, that's what you're supposed to do, right? You're supposed to put everyone in a position to be successful because if everyone's is being successful, then we have a better chance of winning, mm -hmm. right? That is, I need my six man being a six man. I need a seven man acting like a, I need my shooters shooting, rebounders rebounding. If you don't have everybody doing what they're capable of doing, then you have no chance of winning. And when you see the best teams, the winning teams, everyone is doing what they do best. And I think sometimes coaches miss that point. Right? Sometimes coaches, um, every coach, every coach is not trying to win. Like I, you know, um, I had a conversation with Louisville coach uh, when he was, um, when we went out there for a visit. And he said one thing, and I said, I'm sold. He said, I want to win. Because I said, you know, you know, daughter kind of sassy. He said, like, I want to win. <laughs> right? I, I want to win. Like, well, I, you can, whatever she says to me, whatever I say to her, I don't give a shit about none of that. I'm trying to win. If it's the best player, and the best player's talking shit mm -hmm. and saying this, I'm going to say my shit. And then it's like, you, you done? Okay, get in the game. I'm not going to hold a grudge against a player to lose a game. I'm not trying to prove a point. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to prove a point here. Mm -hmm. I want to win the game. Mm -hmm. I can prove a point later when it don't count. In the game, it counts. So if a coach, if a player says, hey, man, fuck you, coach, <laughs> and he's seven for seven, cool. Get the fuck in there. <laughs> Go eight for eight, nine for nine, <laughs> fucking <laughs> ten for ten. <laughs> Shit, I, there's a thing that's called practice, motherfucker. I can, I can run your ass and practice all day, but I'm not going to jeopardize because as long as I get offended, not only am I fucking you as a player, I'm fucking the team. Mm -hmm. And I don't think coaches realize that. 
But then you're going to have a bunch of guys. Bob Huggins would come down <laughs> and, like, just say if he had to sit you mm -hmm. and he had, you were playing and you fucked up. Come down and tell you, you the reason I got to play this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. you, you, Straight up. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's your fault. Uh -huh. Make you that damn. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, if your you ass want to act up, look, 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 look what we got out yeah, here. Yeah, absolutely. But what if turn you over, <laughs> turn over, turn over. <laughs> absolutely. But what, if, what if you are this motherfucker and you got to hear him say? <laughs> oh, he's going to straight the fuck up. If hey, you don't, don't care about your feelings. You don't want a bunch of players cussing you out, though. But, but then everybody going to feel comfortable doing it. But it ain't you know, about, certain it, guys like the Travis Kelsey and Andy Reid shit in the Super yeah, Bowl. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, he could have benched him. Took your ass to the locker room. Mm-hmm. They don't win the Super Bowl, he do that. And he penalizes oh. the team, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. So certain guys, yeah, if you're number 53 on the roster, mm -hmm. no. Yeah. You starting tight end, first team, all that certain guy. You got a little more leeway with certain things, right? Yeah. Doing during that. Like you said, in practice, nah, we ain't got not a fucking chance. During the game, we ain't gonna penalize the team. Yeah. Like, didn't, like, Bill Belichick bench someone and they end up losing because of it? Who? The cornerback? Uh-huh. The starting cornerback. Man, like, 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 you know, some, just stuff like, like, oh, he late to the bus. I ain't starting him. The fuck? I'm, just, like, I'm not starting him because he's late to the bus. I just make him do extra line drills in practice. There's a, pra there's a thing called practice. Right? I'm not going to jeopardize wins and losses. If this game is about wins and losses, I don't know. You know, I just, you know, if, if Ham has a personal problem with somebody, do that shit in practice. Not, on, not in the game. Mm. Right? The game is real time. That's, right? This is treated like war. Like if you lose, you dead. You ain't coming back. <laughs> Are you going to jeopardize the dead? No. So that's kind of like Pete Curl with uh, Marshawn Lynch. When they want to give him the ball because mm -hmm. they was like they didn't because they want to do media interviews and all that. It's like he didn't give him the ball because he didn't want to do media interviews. What, what, something like 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 right like he wasn't talking he, to the media. He should have had stuff. the ball off to Marshawn. Yeah. Uh, tried to make Russell Wilson Super Bowl MVP. Yeah, they tried to make him Super. Uh, Malcolm Butler said the name not to that. But they were they were mad at him because he wasn't doing media. Like he wasn't like the fuck does the media got to do? I went in the fun. Super. <laughs> that's as I said. It's like because I, I, if you. Hey, coach told me, hey, we, I, I want to win games. I ain't got nothing. I ain't, listen, yeah. <laughs> personal, we can do personal practice. You can figure out the personal shit. Because he, he was saying, I had a girl who just, she said she was, he said she was kind of crazy. But she was good. You know, sometimes she'd come out there, cuss me the hell out, and I'm, hey, are you done? Come on so we can win. <laughs> I see, I see you in the locker room after. And just keeping this broader, how often do you feel like coaches' egos get in the way of team success. Like, it's, you know, okay, I know you spoke. Oh, yeah. yeah, the yeah. fuck dude at Sierra Canyon. Yeah. Like, yeah. head coach of Sierra Canyon, prime example. Yeah. Like, it ain't about, this about keeping this job, man. Your, your ego and all that, it ain't about them kids, man. Yeah. Like, getting away all the time. Yeah. Of success, of guys' development, like, all, kids, all of it, at every level, man. But, yeah, it's, guys' egos, man, coaches, worst ones going. Yeah, a, lot of, is, a, lot, a lot of egos, a lot of coaches. That's, 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 some coaches think they're bigger than the players, yeah. right? It's, 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 Van Gundy. Right? Yeah, it's like this is... <laughs> no, I mean, But it feels like a lot of times, at least from an outsider perspective, the media will always portray the coach as the authority figure, so when good things happen, it's because of the coaching. But like you guys mentioned, you might break off a play, and that play ends up being successful, and we see it on TV all the time. Like, oh, great, great strategy from the coach. It's like... It, it's just like any. I mean, it's just like anything. It's all decision making. You're, when you're making a decision, you're just trying to get the highest probability of it, right? So, um, I can call a play, right? This is this is the highest probability. What I'm calling turn five, right? Now, if I have a guard and in the middle of the turn five, his man did something, he takes off, right? And then he goes in for a layup, and then it gets blocked. I'm not going to be yelling at, oh, why, why are you in turn, turn five? Right? He's seen something at that moment in time that was probably better than turn five. He took advantage, and the defense just reacted faster. Because I know if he scores it, I'm going to be cheering like that's, I did that shit. Yeah, good shit, son. Right? Like, no, like, you, they're, they're, basketball is gray. It's not black and white. Black and white is the structure of it. Right? Just like lines on the court. Right? 
It's, it's lines. You play within these lines. I don't give a fuck what you do inside these lines. Same thing with a play. Yeah. I'm calling a play. This is what I want because I see something. But if you see something different, go on and do your job. That's why I have you as my point or my yeah. center or my what's the name. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that, yeah, the dude that's Eric Kane, like, he'll lose his shit when them kids do that. Like, I see it time and time again. Like, kid trying to go make a play, mm -hmm. sub the kid out. Like, like still like that. Like yeah, that. see, I What's tough? Because, you know, you tell like, him. Like, I don't like, I don't like. Like, oh, he, like dude, dude, he do it all the time, bro. It's like embarrassing the kid, slammed. right? Mm -hmm. It's embarrassing the kid in front of his teammates, in front of the people in the stands. Like, well, you know, you know as soon as you make a mistake, you looking over the bench. Yeah, you, I, that's the only reason I would never take a kid out on making a mistake. Like, if I say do something and they don't do it, I'm not going to set them out right there. Maybe, like, you know, yeah. a couple of plays later or something. So he don't feel like that's the reason for it because mistakes happen. Missed shots happen. Mm -hmm. right. Like, you know, like, it's, it's one of those things. It's, it's, it, it, it happens. So I'm not going to, because once I start yanking you for little things, you're, done. you're scared to play back. Yeah, you're micromanaging the game. Yeah, you're yeah. micromanaging every possession. Yeah. Like, because yeah, you, you, you want to call a player. But let me see what the best matchup is. I'm going to call the same play every time because it's the like, mm. like, like, no, let's coach the game, bro. Yeah. Like, you not, you, yeah, let's. Timeouts. Yeah. Uh, but out of bounds. <laughs> Half court. Out of, that, that's when you coach. Other than that, let the player play. Yeah, let the, yeah. We tell guys to not be robots. You know what I mean? But like, tell them don't be robots, but you want them to be but robots. Be a mother, a robot. <laughs> but you want them to be yeah, Why are you want to play exactly like I told you? Like you said, God saw something different that, that could have put us in a better opportunity to score. But let's... Have, you, have you ever wanted to kick a coach ass? <laughs> now, I'm, I'm going to just be honest, man. I've, I've personally been, like, fortunate to have coaches that actually gave me ropes. Mm. Right? I mean, you, you, you know my style. Like, so there's, you know, I've... I never really had <clears throat> coaches that really penalized me for the shit I tried. Mm. Um, you know, one because if I challenge it, I challenge it with thought. Like you know, my first couple, my first year in Golden State, when you know uh, Brian Winters, when I tried to set a, a screen and the big jumped out and switched, and then you know everybody's telling Pat to set the big because he got a little on me, and I was like, I can take him off the dribble, and then from there it's like, why? Because if I drive past him, which I am because he's a big, there's nobody there to block my shot. If I pass it to him, obviously they're going to double. We're going to swing it, swing it, swing it. That's a non-shooter in the corner. So what did we do? Right? We doubled. We swung it, swung it. We, everyone swings it around, and we got the worst shooter in the corner. It's not like that's the best shooter. That's the worst shooter, so that's a bad play. I can take him off the dribble, and then I got the little guard trying to block me coming full speed. So it looks like a better shot than me. You know, you sit there and think about it, like, oh. Okay, that do make sense. You know, so for the most part, when the, I've, I've always had coaches that had dialogue versus the coaches that just like, I don't want to hear shit you say, pass it to the big man. Yeah. Mm. No. I had Ludo, you know what I mean? So I've had, you know, I was, I was kind of, you know, blessed coaches. to have yeah. decent coaches. Yeah. Same. You know. Same. Just asking. Same. My brand, have you? Have no. You no. Okay. No, no, Good. Cool. Just want to make sure. No, I'm cool. You seem like a man of peace and reason and rationale. <laughs> Uh, Kane, have you ever felt nope. the need? Yes, another man. <laughs> nope. Of peace of no, I don't have. We all know it's documented. I don't have an issue with one coach. It's <laughs> just one. <laughs> just one dude, man. Throughout my lifetime of playing basketball. And you know the best thing about that one coach? Every player has the same problem with the same one coach. So it's not the players. <laughs> yeah. It's the one coach. <laughs> yeah, you know, so. I, yeah, throughout my existence of playing this game, I've never had an issue with. So yeah, shifting back to this, this D-Lo situation, how much does a point guard need the full trust of their head coach and organization? How tough is it when they do not have that as a player? So we talking about him in particular or just overall? In, in, in his situation, but just overall. Well, he's not the fucking point guard, so. Mm -hmm. He's a player. He's, <laughs> he's a player that, on the team. So that old school thing out the window. Yeah, he's, he's a player on the team. He's not the point guard on the team. He, he does handle some point guard responsibilities. I understand. Yeah, he guards the other person. He guards the other okay. point guard. <laughs> He's the point guard on defense. Mm -hmm. uh, Uno side of the ball. No, I know. No, but just uh, even for D'Lo as, as a player on that squad coming in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. To have the full trust of, of the head you don't coach. Need the trust. He has the trust of the best player. The, best, the coach, you have the trust of the best player. So the, yeah, the actual it's the best player. Yeah, I need to sure. trust. Me Person and the best matters, player. The more because important. Darvin has to be gone tomorrow and... Mm -hmm. Bron's still gonna be there. And okay. 
Bron trust him. Bron need him to be aggressive. Bron need him averaging mm -hmm. 22. Nigga, that, that, that's the trust that's need. Like, just call it what it is. They can bring somebody else in and, and like, Milwaukee on coach number three right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm pretty sure they had to, fucking Giannis had to trust the fucking boot and holes in. Mm -hmm. Adrian Griffin, now it don't, the motherfucking, that check, that second check can change all the fucking time. So you'd, you'd rather have Giannis than uh, whoever yeah. is the current head coach. And won't, won't me on the floor with him. Yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, I would rather have yes. that. Right, that's, yeah. that, that's more important to, For sure. to us. Because yeah. I can be, it can be, and this happens all the time, the coach can trust the point guard, right, to be on the court, but the best player don't like that motherfucker. Right, and that becomes like, yo, hey, get him off. I don't, nah. Mm -hmm. Every time I'm trying to post up or go this way, he on the other side. Get him the fuck off. I don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? So your trust has to come with the best player, whoever the best player is. As long as he trusts you, you playing. So were you ever in a position like that where you were playing where a guy that you rock with but maybe wasn't getting as much love from the coach? Yeah, and you had to, you that's, had to that's, check a, that's a lot of players that, you know, like sometimes, like, there's been, there's been players on a team where, he ain't probably the best player on the team, but somehow when y'all together, y'all are magic, mm -hmm. right? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. he ain't, like, just, yeah. like, he knows when I move, he knows how to, mm -hmm. you know, have mm -hmm. my back and make the pass and this and that, but he probably ain't a coach favorite or he's part of the rotation, but, yeah. you know, if it was up to you, like, yo, this whole starting five would be a little different. We move a lot better with this person in the game versus this person. That happens all the time, and unless you're in position to, to make those calls, for the most part, you know. Yeah. There's, there's lineups I'd be like, yeah, this is not the right lineup for us, bro. Not right now, dog. But you don't have, you, you can't say nothing. One, you don't want to push, piss the other player off. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's delicate. Yeah, especially when it comes to team. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to do that to your teammate, especially not public. Like you can go in there and tell her, "Listen, we," but not, <laughs> not in real time. You know that motherfucker say he don't like playing with you, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now is it? Now it's that. I think Stuff the biggest that, thing in the league is just trusting yourself. Yep. Like coach, like you said, that that chair gonna be gonna be a different coach <clears throat> almost, you know, any year. So just trust yourself more than anything in the league, because that's all you got. So like I mentioned, D'Lo signed a two-year deal with the Lakers this offseason. He has a player option going to next season. There was a lot of debate, speculation about if he'd be moved at the trade deadline. He did not. So it seems like he has some leverage in his favor now moving forward. So we see a different D'Lo now that he has that leverage. We already seen a different D'Lo. He's been great. 